So for the last of our interviews this week, something a little bit different because today mostly the tables will be turned and it will be our pupils who are asking some questions to me. This is Zoe. Say hello Zoe. Hi. So Zoe is somebody who rejoined the school in year eight and actually this tour that we're about to do is the part of the school which Zoe would have been one of the first people to see. So Zoe, tell us a little bit before we go in here. This was a very different part of the school. You've rejoined in year eight. How are things different up here from what you remember? Yeah, well, all of these rooms that are now turning into classrooms for the secondary pupils used to be boarding rooms, and that's just how I remembered it. So it was quite a shock seeing how everything was going to change. And have you got to use them this year yet? Uh, yeah, we for the seven and eights, we get to use them as common rooms, but everything else is pretty much just waiting to be used for the year nines and up. So, so, big question, what are you going to be wanting to know from me today as we walk around? Well, it would be lovely to understand what's going to happen with all of the classrooms, what they're going to be and who's going to teach them and how the curriculum's going to work. Really? Well, the best way to do that, probably for us to go up and have a look. So, we are here now outside the first of the classes that we're going to see and as you can see, Zoe has transformed into Ola. Hello, Ola. Hello, Mr. Kane. Right, so we're going to come in. Now, this is going to be the master. This will be where Mrs. Richardson has her base. It was once a dormitory, and I, you boarded it there, wasn't it? No, it was a boys' boarding room. Ah, so boys' boarding. Yeah. So never in this part of the school before. But it's a beautiful room with a beautiful view. It's going to make a great place for maths. Now, what did you want to ask me? Uh, what will be different from how children are learning now? Great. Right. So in terms of the curriculum and the way that children learn, there will be some quite big differences going into next year in this part of the school. And um, one of the things, do you remember our Halloween project earlier in the year? Yes. So when we did the Halloween project, we wanted you to do a project which helped you to realise that you could change the world, that you could make a difference, that you could reach outside of this beautiful bubble into the real world. And that will be something that's on the curriculum. So all our classes at the senior end will actually do those projects as a weekly okay. piece. They'll learn how to be leaders. You're the head girl, so you, you'll appreciate the importance of being a good role model. Yeah. And I, I could ask you if you were, but the answer would be an obvious yes. But, um, but all those things will be part of our curriculum. We're also looking at wellbeing, and what that means is we want every week for students to think about the way they're feeling, not just the way they're feeling physically, but also mentally, and really okay. looking after themselves. So actually PE next year will be taught outside, but it will be taught alongside some really exciting subjects like cookery and yeah. gardening, so that we don't just think about physical health, but we think about mental health and, and what goes with that. So it should be a real difference to the way we do things. Okay. Can we go a little bit down the Yes. Ola has now become Amelia. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Mr. King. So we're here in what is a classroom called Flaxman. Now, this is probably the most spectacular classroom on this floor. Can you remember what it used to be in school? Well, this used to be a games room that boarders would use and they um, usually come here after dinner, I think. After dinner, a time to relax and, yeah. and to play. And there are still signs. If people could see, there's still a pool table in here somewhere, really, but we won't tell them about that. But this will become the English room. So this will be where Mrs. Thomas and our new English teacher, actually Mrs. Johnson, will have their base. And it'll be where one of the year groups in this part of the school, possibly say year seven or year eight, will have their form space. Um, and it's a big room, as you can see. What's this part of the room going to be? Well, let's go and have a look, shall we? So this, bit of this is the pastoral area for this particular year group. So whichever year group have this as their classroom space, they'll also have this as their pastoral area. So hopefully a really nice space that, let's say, year seven are in this room or year eight, they'll be able to come and have hot chocolate with their tutor, meet their friends here, spend some of their break times here, but also to be able to have some sessions with support for their work, any problems that they have, a space where they can come and talk and share some things which we think is a really important part of this bit of the school. So it's always about helping people, of course, with their exams and with their learning, but we also want to look after every student and make sure that we get to know them really well so that we can help them in the ways that they need. For the last part of our interview, we're here in one of the tutorial rooms in this part of the school, and this is the bit where the girls can fire any questions to me that they have about what's going to happen next year. So who would like to go for Right, Zoe, far away. Um, so... Seeing as we're going into year nine next year, what are the um, like 
like head of school and prefects, what, how is that going to work? So that's a really good question because year eight has always been that year where we have our prefects, our heads of school, our roles of responsibility. And the first thing I would say about that is I have a real vision that everybody in the school leads that we teach people, even from the youngest age, how to lift other people, how to improve their lives. So it's important that all year groups are leading. And when you become year nine, you will always be the oldest students in the school and you will always have a responsibility to lead. But because we've always had year eight as a special year, for the next few years at least, it will remain special for those that move into this part of the school. And we will still have prefects in year eight for a while. But our oldest students will always be our most special. And when we come through here in a minute, you'll see this is the common room that's being prepared for years 10 and 11 when we get to that stage. And they will then have their own kitchen, their own seating area, television up here. So there's always something to look forward to. Any other questions? Yeah. Will there be... Um new teachers for the singing school? So a great question. We're actually, just this week, we've uh, appointed a new head of music. You may know that Mr. Larley, sadly, is actually, he's, he'll still be here as a singing teacher and doing some instrumental and choir work with us, but we're appointing a new head of music, and I'm sure they'll be involved partially in this bit of the school. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that we've got a lady called Mrs. Johnson, who used to be head of English at Seaford and has been a former academic deputy, and she's going to be an English teacher in this part of the school. But you'll also have the senior teachers that you have now, like Mrs. Richardson, and Mr. Cuthbertson will be a big part of things. He may even have this office because he's got a curriculum role in guiding students towards GCSE, something that he's got lots of experience in. Miss Sykes will be up here because there'll be modern foreign languages, there'll be our languages teaching going on in this part of the school. Um, and we're hoping down in humanities as well, which might bring Mrs Coomba up into this part of the school more. And the interesting thing is that you will all learn here and have your pastoral spaces, but some of the younger students, even year six classes, may come up for some of their lessons in this part of the school as well. So it's impossible to imagine how busy it's going to be up here and what a change it will make to the school as it is. Did you say that there was going to be a new computer science teacher as well? Very good. Well remembered, Billy. I should have said that. Now, the computer room is likely to stay where it is, but we're appointing a new teacher called Mr Begin, and he is going to take over computer science in the school. And actually, next term you'll probably know, Mrs Flatley, we gave her some flowers for them, we're in the centre of her often. Sadly, she, she isn't going to be with us next term. But actually, Mrs Johnson, who's going to teach you English next year, is going to be doing computer science next term. So you're going to get to know Mrs Johnson nice and early. But Mr Begman is a gentleman I've known for a long, long time. He's been working as the head of computing at a prep school called Edgeborough. And, and he is really passionate about computing and building robots. And for all people that like gaming, he's a proper head of computing who loves their gaming. So I think for a lot of people, it'll be a really interesting and different role model in the school. So what if we decide that we don't want to do computer science at our GCSEs? That's a really good question, Zoe, because naturally, we're, not everyone will choose the same options. And actually, it's a good time to say to everybody as they come on into year nine, we're actually going to choose our options next year and start to think about the subjects that everybody wants to focus on. But if you don't want to do computer science, we still want you to learn how to use technology, how to communicate in the modern world. So our intention is that every student will continue to do things like that all the way to GCSE and will still get support with learning about technology, which we think is going to be important in the world. Is in senior school, is there going to be some like, business or politics lessons coming? And that's a, a big thing for me, Ola. It's really important that the work that we're doing relates to the outside world and that we're not just doing it to pass exams. We're not just doing the normal things that we would do in your curriculum up until this age. So when we did our projects on Halloween and when the chickens come on site, we're going to use those to learn a little bit about business and enterprise and plans and inventions. We really want, yes, that greater engagement. We want to reach out to local businesses. So we really hope that the education we do after 16 is connected with the real world. And of course, we're going to give more and more careers advice, more and more preparation, so that when you get to that age of 16, you get all the support you need to decide which pathway you want to take in the world. And we want young people to be really prepared for that when they get there. So the last bit that we're going to come up and see today, so this, in fact, if I asked you, what's this been for the last few weeks? It was a common room for your sevens and eights. So it's been a common room. What else has been going on here? 
COVID testing. Excellent. So this is the COVID testing suite is what it's been for a little while, but this is going to become the year 10 and 11 common room. And what's really exciting about that is that this kitchen by here where you have been being tested, this becomes the kitchen for our older students. So you will be treated like grown-ups. You will be coming here and being able to make yourself a cup of tea or coffee or a hot chocolate, and you will be able to sit down here and chat to your friends and socialise. And we hope to have a, a television screen here and some news from the outside world coming in. So it'll be a really different experience of school, I think, to any that you've had before. And when we're planning for this, I don't know if you've ever heard us talk about this at school, but we want to make an education that's for the head, the hand, the heart, and the health. And so all of your teachers are planning their curriculums so that of course they're thinking about your head and they're preparing you for exams and the world beyond, and that's important. But they're also going to be doing things that engage the hand, that are creative, that get you doing things. Stuff that children really love and that open up different journeys in life and different careers. So those will be exciting. And if we include the heart, that's about leadership, teamwork, the relationships that we build between people. And then finally, health well-being, both mental and physical health. The curriculum will be designed to reach all of those areas. So it'll be a very different curriculum, I think, to the ones that you've done before.